Welcome everyone to the Lben Tea House, it's your host Lben here. Tonight, we'll delve into a story that's less terrifying but quite magical, about a special kind of fate. The incident occurred not too long ago on a day when there weren't many patrons in the tea house. As I was getting the tea sets ready, suddenly my friend Tang Mei burst in energetically. Don't let his name mislead you, although it includes the word Mei, which means beautiful, Tang Mei is pretty much the epitome of a tough guy. You may not know this, but before the Ming Dynasty, the word Mei was used to describe men. Like the famous men of the Song Dynasty, Pan Ren Mei and Chen Shimei, these were renowned males. But nowadays, having Mei in a name seems a bit off. This Tang Mei, a strikingly handsome fellow, tall at about 1 meter 80, definitely has that celebrity look about him. He's got a decent job in Beijing, single and unmarried, and I haven't heard any mentions of a girlfriend. He came to the tea house to see me that day, dead serious, asking if I could store another fan for him as there was no space left at his home. I was puzzled, thinking how big could this fan be to not fit in his place? He then pulled out a 6 inch small fan from his bosom, just about the size of a palm. I teased him. Are you sick or something? Have you moved into a palace that you can't find room for such a small fan? With a wry smile, Tang Mei ordered a pot of Bailichan green tea and began to share his extraordinary encounter. He mentioned that few young people nowadays wish to return to their hometown after graduating from college. Likewise, not wanting to deal with parental nagging, he chose to work in Beijing instead. Coming from a reasonably well-off family, plus a high salary, he lived quite comfortably without much trouble, despite being away from home. My friend also has quite a penchant for collecting antiques and calligraphy. One day, he strolled through Rongbao Jai in Beijing, the country's largest trading center for calligraphy and paintings, practically a cultural thoroughfare. The place gets incredibly lively on weekends. He went there early that day, just to meander about and see if there were any desirable items, like a Deyue Xuan ink brush or paintings by Yi Dij. While he was wandering around, he overheard an argument up ahead and out of curiosity, went over to check out the commotion. He saw two individuals in the midst of a conflict. Through their conversation, my friend learned that a customer, after making a purchase and feeling unsatisfied a few days later, wanted to return the product and thus came back to reason with the shopkeeper. The vendor used the slang term not opening the gate, which is an insider's lingo amongst merchants for describing fakes. As true antiquities are hard to discern from forgeries, the industry has developed a language known only to those on the inside. These special terms are used to create an environment of asymmetric information in order to protect the interests of the sellers. The implication of not opening the gate suggests to the customer that they may have bought a fake. The bickering between the two became increasingly heated, and the buyer, being very angry, finally threatened to tear up the fan on the spot if the seller did not refund the money. My friend Tang Mei couldn't stand by any longer. Coming from a well-off family, he naturally had a bit of a hero spirit and didn't like to see injustice taking place. So he quickly stepped in to try and calm things down, shouting, Big Brother, don't be in such a hurry, what can't be discussed amiably? Why harm the good atmosphere? That's how Tang Mei came to understand the whole story. A few days earlier, while strolling through Yuli Shang, the buyer had taken a fancy to a fan. The seller told him it was an ancient fan from the Tang Dynasty, which was extremely rare to still exist. When asked about the price, the seller quoted 8,000 yuan. The buyer, who enjoyed puzzles and solving mysteries, immediately thought of the antique appraisal shows on TV. He imagined if this fan, just like the treasures featured on those shows, could be bought for 8,000 yuan and turn out to be worth 80,000 yuan upon appraisal. Feeling as if he had scored a great deal, he was elated. However, after bringing it home, he had several people look at it, but they all expressed doubts. Even his friends began to tease him, and on the day of his full moon feast, he was ridiculed, which led him, fuming, to attempt to return the purchase. However, there's a saying in the antique industry. Once settled on the ground, no longer argue over authenticity, meaning unless agreed upon beforehand, there is no such thing as a return once the deal is made. Kang Mei picked up the fan and examined it carefully. The craftsmanship of the fan ribs was exquisite, featuring intricately designed details like magnolia tops and temple gate joints, showing a lot of ingenuity. The spine was sturdy, with tight inner layers, not loose at all, it indeed seemed like a fine fan. Upon opening it, he found Wang Chongling's autumn moon over the western palace written on it. The lotus flower can't compare to a lady's makeup, the fragrant breeze over the water's surface red and green. It's clear the cold waters reflect autumn in your eyes. The empty green bright moon accompanies the king. 
The poetry was well penned. Let's see what the beauty painted on the back looks like. Turning the fan over, wow, the beauty depicted was so stunning. Like fresh flowers in a room. Willow catkins gracefully drifting along the riverside. Lotus leaves rippling with the breeze, their poses, with fishes and lotus flowers complementing each other, being charming and alluring, truly full of grace and charm. As the old saying goes, character depictions in paintings are usually done according to standardized techniques and don't often stand out much. But the painting on this fan was different, it indeed captured the attention. On a whim, Tang Mei said, stop arguing, I don't want to dispute over this fan anymore, I'll buy it for 8,000 yuan. And so, he paid the money and happily took the fan home. Fan enthusiasts typically fall into two categories, those who focus on the appearance, admiring the craftsmanship of the ribs and the design, and those who focus on the surface of the fan, especially the calligraphy and paintings of famous artists. Tang Mei obviously appreciated every corner of this particular fan. Through this fan, he experienced the beauty of antiquity, whether it was the delicate craftsmanship of the ribs or the vivid patterns on the surface, he was very satisfied. After returning home, he couldn't put it down, constantly picking it up to admire and even rubbing it on his face playfully. However, since it was not quite the season to use the fan, it sat unused for several days, simply appreciated as an art piece on the desk. He planned to bring it out again during the Dragon Boat Festival to show off this precious relic from the Tang Dynasty to his friends. Busy days went on as usual, with Tang Mei working and going to the office, and the days passing one by one. About a month and a half later, one night, Tang Mei came home late from overtime work. Upon entering his home, he saw everything was neat and tidy, with warm dinner still laid out on the table, instantly lifting his spirits. He praised the cleaning lady to himself. Tang Mei had hired a regular housekeeper to clean his place, and he rarely did any housework himself, like laundry or changing bed sheets. Today, seeing the room clean and the simple but satisfying dishes of one meat and one vegetable on the dining table, he felt very pleased and planned to give her a little extra pay afterward. Grateful for the housekeeper's attentive care, he cleared the dinner table of food. Unexpectedly, from that day on, he would come home to carefully prepare dinner every evening, simple yet delicious. During this time, he didn't bother being polite with the housekeeper, he would pack up the leftovers from the night before and take them to the office the next day. A quick reheat in the microwave, and it would turn into a tasty lunch. This routine continued for over a half month until one day, Tang Mei felt unwell. He felt discomfort in his stomach and severe stomach cramps. The pain was unbearable, so he rushed to the hospital for a checkup. After taking some x-rays, the doctor asked him if he was on a diet because his symptoms looked like they were caused by gastric adhesion due to prolonged fasting. Hearing this, Tang Mei was utterly baffled as he had not been dieting and had been eating well daily. He left the hospital somewhat disgruntled, feeling dissatisfied with the visit, sulking all the way home. Upon arriving home, everything seemed normal, with the house clean and the table full of delicious food, looking as if his dinner was ready and waiting. He washed his hands, preparing to start his evening meal. Just as he was about to do so, the front door opened, and someone came in. It was the housekeeper responsible for the housework. As Tang Mei was about to ask her why she had come back when the housekeeper spoke first. The housekeeper said, Oh, Tang, I'm so sorry, I've had some trouble at home recently, and I even lost my phone, so I couldn't contact you. I haven't been able to come to clean for these past few days. She glanced inside the house and then added, did you find someone else? Her words left Tang Mei utterly astonished. If the cleaning lady hadn't come for these days, then who had been taking care of the meals and other household chores? This question threw Tang Mei into confusion, his brain spinning rapidly to unravel the mystery. As he pondered, a woman emerged from the bedroom. She was mesmerizing and graceful, bearing a strong resemblance to the beauty painted on that fan. She was dressed in ancient attire, with wide sleeves, all identical to the painting on the fan. She even greeted the housekeeper as if she were the mistress of the home. Seeing this, the housekeeper had an epiphany and said with a smile, Oh my, Tang, you've got yourself a girlfriend. That's wonderful, really wonderful. It was then that Tang Mei realized that for the past days, a lady from the fan had been taking care of his household and cooking for him. The sudden revelation of this magic and joy dispelled all the confusion and unrest. Just as the housekeeper was about to leave, she jokingly said she would come back next week, suggesting Tang should continue to enjoy his world with the lady. Tang Mei, trembling, quickly said to wait, insisting that he would leave with the housekeeper. He urged her not to see him out and to hurry back to her own affairs. She left, laughing, saying her timing was really off, 
while Tang Mei tried to detain her, but she was already out the door. Now alone with the lady in the room, Tang Mei stood unsteady, unable to lift his head. It was the lady who spoke first. She asked Tang Mei if he felt nothing after having been served by her for over a month. Too scared to move, Tang Mei was ordered by her to look up. He then asked who she really was. She told Tang Mei that she had once been a talented lady in the Great Tang's Imperial Harem and had unfortunately been killed when rebels stormed into Chang'an. Luckily, her likeness was captured on the fan, allowing her spirit to linger, and she had been cultivating in the fan for a long time. It was Tang Mei's kind intervention that day that saved her, and the reason she revealed herself in her true form was to repay him. She then told Tang Mei about a method that could help her ascend to immortality. At midnight that evening, she asked him to draw a circle at the crossroads with willow juice, leaving an exit facing the direction of Lulishang. Then burn Joss paper inside the circle and throw the fan into it. If the fan didn't catch fire and the image of the lady disappeared after the burning, it meant success. Tang Mei agreed to help, and when he asked if there was anything he should be wary of, she warned him to watch out for the police. That night, Tang Mei did as instructed, and miraculously, the fan was unscathed. When he opened it, the image of the lady had vanished, but the poetry on the back turned into a new text. This incident frightened him greatly. He gave me the fan and kept asking what kind of immortal the lady could have become after her ascension. I thought about it and told him that she might have roamed to the areas around Yuli Shang, taking on the role of a local guardian spirit. This is tonight's story, and I hope everyone enjoyed it. This tale is full of mystery and legend, telling of the extraordinary experiences a historical fan brought to its owner, as well as a strange faith that transcended time and space. Well, friends, that's our story for tonight. I hope everyone liked it.